Welcome to HortTube. My name is Jim Putnam. In this video, I'm gonna do a garden tour of a place I actually toured in the fall and I said I'd come back in the spring. I think that original video is called Garden Tour. No lawn or something like that. It's on a small urban lot. And um, it, in order to maximize the amount of space for um, um, flowering plants and shrubs and trees, uh, it doesn't have a lawn, but it has a beautiful garden path that leads you around and some seating areas and just some nice kind of little hidden pockets along the way. Everybody um, seemed to enjoy this video back in the fall, so I'm coming back in the spring. Some things have actually already bloomed out. It's super, super early um, this year that everything seemed to have wanted to wake up and get to blooming. We didn't have much of a winter here. This is in Raleigh, North Carolina, zone 7B, almost 8. And so um, again, I'm going to just uh, take the camera around and show you some interesting things that are in this uh, landscape. Uh, some things are blooming now and some were just perennials that are just popping out of the ground that'll be blooming a little later in the summer. Thanks for watching. So I'll start out here uh, by the road. Uh, there's some nice uh, dwarf yopon hollies right here at the entrance to the driveway. Uh, there's an oxalis down here that's in bloom with the pink flowers uh, right there. There's a dogwood um, up above me here that's uh, kind of past peak flowering, but the sh this really nice shaped uh, dogwood. There's some uh, red, these were red azaleas that have kind of passed at this point, but they're a nice evergreen feature to the entrance to the driveway. We cross over here. Um, if you look down this uh, sidewalk, it's a little shadowy. There's a hedge of uh, uh, abelia that uh, make a nice uh, buffer um, for this very, like I say, this is a very urban, loud space. There's a very, uh, very, very busy road right here at the end. There's a firepower nandina. This will be red in the winter time. If we'd actually had winter this year, there's one across the uh, driveway that's still showing some of that red color. Uh, really nice uh, camellia out here by the road that's uh, been kind of box shaped right there. Um, there's a armeria right here, the beautiful pink flowers here in the spring. And then um, there's a still be right there that'll be blooming later. Most of this space is shady. I'm gonna pan you up here and show you. This neighborhood is pretty dominated by some fairly large uh, large oaks. And, and I miss, something I missed in the first tour video, that's actually a longleaf pine back there. Uh, the whole Southeast United States used to be covered in these things uh, from where I'm at in North Carolina or even Southern Virginia all the way down to Texas. We don't see a whole lot of them, but that's a longleaf pine. The really good pine straw comes from those. Uh, bringing you back down, there's Hellerai hollies right here. Some anemones in front, of course they'll be blooming later in the uh, summer. There's a, a euphorbia right here with the yellow flowers that's uh, in bloom right now and the variegated foliage uh, on it. And uh, there's some lungwort right there beside it. And then I'll bring you back around and show you this uh, weeping katsura. I think this is kind of the star, the star of the show here. Um, look how beautiful this thing is. I've taken pictures of this thing several times this year. Uh, this weeping katsura, what an entrance. Uh, to this garden. Um, okay, we'll head back or back through this way, and you can see this long view down the side of the house, down these sidewalks. Uh, there's more dwarf yopon hollies here on the left. Uh, there's, of course, the hydrangeas aren't blooming yet, but they're all leafing out. Here's an astilbe that is uh, uh, about is budded up. That one will be blooming pretty soon. There's an oak leaf hydrangea right there. And then this is a uh, sunshine ligustrum. It's in a little bit of shade, so it's not quite as bright as they normally are, but even in the deep shade, it's pretty showy. Uh, there's a uh, chocolate vine right here, or five leaf akebia growing on this over the top. These have the little red flowers that they've probably finished um, at this point already. There's a, uh, a trailing hydrangea here, or vining hydrangea right there and a little boxwood hedge with this brick uh, back drop to it right there. Uh, some nice container plants going on in this space. Uh, here's a toad lily as we come back here. Right there's a toad lily. We've got a uh, uh, gardenia here that's uh, budded up. Lots and lots of flowers coming on it um, pretty soon. And uh, it's a really giant hosta right there and it's already up and uh, blooming heavily already. Lots of hosta in this, uh, in this space right here. There's a, a gold spirea, but it's in so much shade that it's 
you know, kind of mixed, uh, mixed on the colors uh, here, but it actually looks pretty good. Um, a little bit of yellow in it, a little bit of orange in the new growth, and then the green, and uh, uh, back here, there's another euphorb or euphorbia right here of some kind. Don't know that variety, but it is a pretty little thing. And uh, sedums coming up back there, uh, hellebore right here, that old foliage. If you cut this old foliage off in the late winter before they start blooming, they will bloom longer and look a little bit, will look a little bit, uh, um, you know, less, less of that dying foliage down at the bottom. I take that off about January every year. Here's a, a mum, uh, a hardy chrysanthemum of some kind coming up. Of course, this will bloom late. All the things in this yard are staged. They're, they're going to be something blooming out here all the time, and this is not going to bloom until the fall. Uh, there's a peony uh, coming up through that little cage to support that, and uh, lots of mint. There's a lot of herbs back here. There's several different mints in these containers right here. And then, uh, let's see, sorry, my shadows along that wall right there. There's a liatris right there. I think there's one more coming up. I'll show you in a minute, another hellebore. And I think that's probably pineapple sage right there is what that looks like. Uh, there's several grasses coming up. I don't actually know necessarily what they are as they're coming up. This almost this look definitely looks like a miscanthus of some kind, um, and that's probably some sort of fountain grass right there. There's one right there, and there's one right there. This really nice little seating wall around a uh, fire pit right here. There's a little bit of a uh, construction going on. He got a new smoker, which he's in the process of putting together, and. I've interrupted that uh, operation, so uh, that's what's going on here. But this patio space is super, super nice. And uh, this uh, uh, very, very large camellia right here. And I think uh, this is a Professor Sargent. And you can see it's 20 feet tall, probably. There's still a few flowers on it, a double red flowering. Uh, this buffer on this side um, is uh, Nellie Stevens Hollies. They're flowering right now, and there's just a thousand bees up there. Um, they're going down that line. Even the neighbor has them in their backyard. Okay, headed back this way. Um, got some daylilies uh, coming up right there. There's some parsley in containers right there and Swiss chard growing in those containers. Uh, right here, some blue fescue. And uh, there's a ground cover uh, euonymus is what that is right there. Uh, let's see, uh, there's some lavender. Uh, right here with the blue flowers right there and there and there's a ground cover phlox right there okay um, we'll head over the top right here this is a uh, trailing uh, raspberry right here ribus um, it's kind of taking over this space beautiful little ground cover plant though but it uh, can get a little aggressive at times he's definitely there's definitely some uh, the, some of the neighbors, uh, um, ground cover vinca and uh, uh, ivy and that kind of thing that he's slowly been pushing back over time, but there's definitely some more to do uh, in there. There's an elephant ear waking up right there. And uh, let's see, uh, there's a, a ligularia. Okay, there's a ligularia right here. This will have those big yellow flower spikes on it if you've never seen these. Super, super interesting plants. Uh, there's another dwarf yopon holly, and then various uh, camellias here. Uh, big, giant um, camellia japonicas. Um, you know, these big, tall, big, big, big shrubs won't create much of a sound barrier, but they do create a, you know, a great visual barrier. The plants don't do a great job of cutting out sound, but like, you know, like I say, but they do. Uh, you know, um, you feel like you're in little rooms here. You know, we left. Let me swing you back around. You know, we left that little room over there with the seating area, and then we came down this way, and we're in an area, you know, with a hot tub right here. And again, it's, you know, in a little bit of a little room here. These are Formosa azaleas, very large growing evergreen azaleas. If you live in the southeast, you got a shady space, you want to know what you used to as a screen. Uh, Formosa azaleas, a good choice for that. Um, there's some uh, Ligustrum right here um, they're kind of naked down at the bottom that's what they'll do in the shade uh, like this there's very you know hosta 
various hosta and you know any kind of shade perennial you can think of there's actually some sedum right here which you wouldn't normally think of as a shade perennial but it seems to be doing fine there's cast iron plant right there let's look up real quick at this uh, crepe myrtle it's definitely stretched because there's not enough light here but it looks great it's never been butchered and so it still looks pretty good uh, a lot of think people would be butchering this thing every winter and you get those weird knots on it from doing that but he's let this one get up there into the light so it can actually bloom uh, the next uh, hedge here are uh, Shindo viburnum, which, you know, I guess they're probably 25 feet tall now, just shearing the sides on them. Uh, very fast growing once they get going, kind of super slow to start. Kind of a, it's a weird screening plant that way. Uh, but once they get going, they really take off. Okay, if we come back around to this side of the house, there's more... Uh, Dwarf Yopon hollies, which are just a great choice if you want a boxwood looking plant in a shady space, uh, native um, to the uh, southeast United States. There's a spirea back there. It's about to flower. Uh, looks like a, one that's kind of a pinky red. Uh, maybe Anthony Waterer. That would be the, my guess on what that spirea is. Uh, and a uh, uh, Nandina, Firepower Nandina. Uh, various hydrangeas all over the place, and they won't start blooming for another month or so. Uh, let me bring you back around here. There's uh, lots of uh, hellebores uh, back in that space. There's a really nice podocarpus right here. That's a nice specimen uh, right there. Th those create really, really nice screening plants in that part shade condition as well. This is a really nice wygelia right here. It's in full bloom. I don't know what variety this is, but it's a green foliage one with a uh, pinkish uh, flower on it. This uh, Got the water hose through here, but this uh, these steps and this uh, stone space right here. This is similar to the way I'm going to do mine, but I'll use field stone um, where this I don't know what stone this is, but um, mine will look something similar to this. But uh, like I say, with field stone, there's some ajuga here that's starting to uh, bloom. The uh, grass that's actually in this are this uh, this is a dwarf mondo grass that's plugged into this sidewalk. If you're wondering what that is, and it does a really good job of a uh, you know, as much as anything, weed control, because no weeds are going to be able to grow. That stuff grows so thick. Uh, this is an auto lucan laurel right here. It's already bloomed out, but a beautiful evergreen shrub. Makes a great foundation plant all season. These are, um, I think these are probably bluebird hydrangeas. Hydrangea serrata bluebird is what it looks like to me. I know it's hard to identify plants without flowers sometimes. Flowers are the easiest way to identify things, but um, I think this one's bluebird. Uh, there's some variegated Solomon seal right there. Uh, I'm going to walk up here. This is the only real full sun spot up here. Uh, I think these are Shasta daisies coming up. These will bloom most of the summer. And then I gave him some lettuce plants, which are right out there in that sunny space right there. There's some uh, another euphorb, euphorbia on the corner, some curly leaf parsley. Uh, got a uh, rosemary right there and uh, some lamb's ear right there. I know I'm going fast, but there are so many things here really just hidden all over the place. These azaleas have kind of passed peak, but they're creating a fantastic barrier. You know, looking back at this house from, you know, as I head back out here to the street, I mean, you can't see, you can't see in here. You can pretty much be anywhere on the path around this house and not be seen from the street or a neighbor uh, using vertical. Um, evergreen shrubs. This is a boulevard cypress. Probably not completely happy to be in this much shade, but uh, really nice foliage. Um, Blue-green foliage if you've never seen boulevard cypress. Kind of softer to the touch than a lot of other conifers too. Uh, coming through here, uh, again, you know, azaleas that have uh, bloomed at this point and some hosta. Um, I actually don't know what fern this is. Ferns are not my... I grew a lot. I grew ferns at my place, but uh, I'm definitely not a fern uh, expert. I mean, autumn fern possibly, but it seems a little tall for autumn fern, so I'm going to uh, withdraw that. <laughs> um, then there's a, uh, another cast iron plant uh, right here, and a lobelia right there with the uh, blue flowers. And we've got several different uh, hookra um, growing in here. There's one there. Uh, there's two more varieties right here. There's a um, Tuberous begonia right there, and some more uh, 
Camellia sasanquis. Uh, and right on the end of those Camellia sasanquis is a uh, uh, Laura Petalum, right there with the purple foliage. And let's back off. There's another hydrangea uh, right there. And then uh, the, I think these were I think these were both variegated upright euonymus here, but the green has taken over. Um, you see the other one right here. Yeah, you can see it right down there in the middle. There's some variegation in that one, and then it, but the rest of the plant has kind of reverted and turned green at this point. This is a really nice uh, perennial here. It'll take sun or the shade. Really, it's uh, Penstemon has that. It's just probably Husker Red. I think is the name of this one. It has that reddish new foliage. So I'm back here, back around where I started, and that's that uh, weeping katsura, which like I say, is definitely the star of the show here. And I'll tell you what, I have skipped a ton. And there's a cherry right above, right here, that I didn't point out. Um, those uh, Nellie Stevens hollies come to that end. There's a row of uh, privet right there that kind of block that side as well. Sorry if this one had a bit of a frenetic pace. Um, I know that everybody says, slow down, Jim, slow down, Jim. My ADD definitely kicks in. But also here, um, I would start this. I've started this one a couple times and I, I, there were horns out there on the street and all kinds of things. So uh, I, I felt like while I had a window there, I probably did rush a little bit, but I hope you get the uh, gist of just how nice this space is coming around. And I think you could come back here uh, every, uh, every week or two all season long and see something else that's blooming. There's other things popping out of the ground that I didn't show and I'll come back maybe sometime later in the summer and show you that this place just uh, never stops. And the key to that, the key to that is shopping throughout the year. And rather than going to a garden center April 15th and loading the back of the car up with things with flowers on them, go on April 15th, get some things with flowers on them, and then come back on May 15th and June 15th and July 15th and, and load the car again. And you will see that your garden will become a place where uh, there's always something happening, even in the wintertime. This, this garden has a tremendous amount of winter interest as well. So thanks as always for following along with my videos. I hope to do more of these tour videos as the, uh, the season progresses. Uh, obviously a little bit of a strange year uh, knocking on new doors, but this is a person that I know pretty well. So I was able to do this one at a safe distance from people. Thanks for watching.